Hello everyone, welcome to my JSurf talk. So what is JSurf? I would describe it as a connection between Julia and JavaScript with a reactive DOM and a server with some routing. It can be used for dashboards, wrapping JavaScript libraries and writing web pages. It has a similar scope to React.js in some ways, but it has quite a different approach and is of course not as mature and big and usable. How does it work? Let's create a simple web page with it. The core is that you have a DOM handler that is called whenever you get a request. So if you request this web page here on localhost, this function will get called. And with this JSurf DOM uh, module, you have all the different HTML tags wrapped that you can use. And then this uses actually HyperScript um, and is a pretty nice abstraction, Julia abstraction over HTML. Then you can run this handler with um, uh, this application constructor here on the port and URL, and then you get this here. One of the core abstractions in JSSurf is using observables everywhere. So for example, you could create this observable here that creates a color. And one of the main functionalities in observables is that you can map over them and create new state um, from this. So color CSS, if you map color, every time color updates, you want to return this new string. So how does this look? It looks like this. You can set a new value here, green for example. And then if you look at this here, you see that um, it's this new string. And you can um, register callbacks with this, so they will get called whenever this value changes. Now, this is the main abstraction here, and we can use it everywhere in our DOM. So if I reload this with the new observable, we see that it's green, and then we can set it back to red pretty easily. One can also update observables from the JavaScript side. So we have this little string macro here to encapsulate JavaScript code. And we even get nice syntax highlighting from the Atom IDE. And how the updating works is that we can splice in any Julia observable in this expression here. And then we can call the JavaScript function update observable and set it to a new value. So if I run this here, I will have this button here and can change the color by clicking this button. There are a few other ways to execute JavaScript. So we already saw that we can pass it as HTML attributes, but we can also run a JavaScript function whenever a DOM element loads in our DOM. So here we call alert when the button gets loaded and we can call a JavaScript function whenever an observable updates. So let's run this here and reload. We first get the hi from JavaScript, which gets executed on load. And then whenever we update the observable, we get another alert. So if we click this, we get another alert. So these are the main ways to run JavaScript on your page. And yes, that's these are the basic building blocks to create interactive HTML JavaScript applications. Now, you can also include existing JavaScript libraries or um, CSS styles. So for example, here I have a couple of um, um, CSS library, the MUI library, for example. Um, I've written a little slider style example, asset and some image, and you can all include them as assets. And run this here. And now we will get this new styled app. 
and as you can see here um, on any slider move we show the slider value and we can see that this corresponds to this a little uh, weirdness here is as you can see these are unsigned uint 8 values that's because we are using message pack which packs any value to the smallest integer or float it fits into which is very effective but can be a bit annoying um, as you can see we already also have a link here it doesn't do anything yet but um, we can make it work by adding a new route to our app um, for this let's just rename this to dom handler one and use that here as a new road and you can add it as simple as this um, with the pattern for the road here and then the handler you want to call um, you need to call this surf dom function which accepts this context and the callback function here which is a bit annoying it's just a little change I need to do to make this a bit nicer but now this should work see here we have this um, um, handler that we had before now the final feature I want to present is very new and really cool so here we just use our slider um, I'm using actually Tailwind here to very quickly style our little example via uh, Tailwind classes which is a lot easier and then instead of just returning the DOM we return this um, record state map which will record all st states triggered by the slider. And that combined with um, JSERF's export standalone will enable you to export a standalone static app. Let's see if it works here. This is still live on our server. Just squares um, this value on the Julia side with a Julia process and now we can export this as a standalone which will just put all the used resources and assets um, and the state map into one folder with the index HTML which can be served for example by live server or put on github IO or put into your documentation let's see if it works so here, this is our static app. There's no Julia process running, and that's just static HTML, and it works very nicely. In my Marky talk, you can see very complex examples using this um, for serving complex interactive plots. Thank you, and I hope you enjoy using JSurf and learning about it.